Today we're checking out hidden images and Easter eggs on classic album covers. Some of these are very clever, some, well, they are kind of cringy, but they are all a lot of fun. Iron Maiden had some of the coolest album covers, particularly the 1980s stuff done by Derek Riggs. One of the more intricate covers from this era was 1986's Somewhere in Time, which contains at least 36 hidden details, Easter eggs, and inside jokes. Here are some of my favorites, starting with the front cover. Designer Derek Riggs' signature logo can be found as a badge in the center of Eddie's chest. For the uninitiated, Eddie is Maiden's monster mascot. Here, Eddie is standing next to a sign that partially reads Acacia, a reference to the song 22 Acacia Avenue. Someone graffitied Eddie Lives over this poster of Maiden's self-titled debut album. Torn posters also appear on the covers of The Sanctuary and The Women in Uniform singles. To the left of Eddie's gun, you can see a neon eye of Horus. The title track from Maiden's Power Slave album references this Egyptian symbol. The trash can on the lamppost here is just like the one on Maiden's debut album. The black cat with the halo also appears on the back cover of Live After Death. There are plenty of Easter eggs on the back cover of this album as well. The clock reads 2358 or 2 minutes to midnight, a nod of course to the Maiden song. The opera house is called Phantom Opera House. On their first album, Maiden had a great track called Phantom of the Opera. Aces High Bar is of course a reference to the song Aces High, so is the Spitfire airplane flying above the bar. In the skies beyond the cityscape, you can see a pyramid, a nod to the Power Slave album cover. The Grim Reaper makes another appearance. He can also be seen on the Trooper and Live After Death covers. This woman in the red lit room is a reference to Charlotte the Harlot, who is mentioned in some of the band's songs and who frequents 22 Acacia Avenue. Singer Bruce Dickinson is holding a brain, a reference to the Peace of Mind album. And finally, here's a sign for the Ancient Mariner Seafood Restaurant, a nod to Rhyme with the Ancient Mariner, off the Power Slave album. And that is just a sample of the hidden images on this album cover. I could probably dedicate a whole episode to delving into everything that's going on here, and I may very well do that. There is a pretty cool hidden image on Fleetwood Mac's 1982 album Mirage. Take a close look at Lindsey Buckingham's and Stevie Nicks's joined hands. When you do, the hands disappear and you see the profile of an old woman appear. The shading on Stevie's knuckles roughly makes up the woman's squinty eye, and her nose is formed by Lindsey's thumb and palm. Stevie's thumb helps define the mouth and the chin. The woman's hair is covered in a dark hood or shawl, which your imagination will have to form out of the black background. A cool mirage, indeed. White Snake has always been known for its suggestive lyrics and music videos. Anyone remember Tawny Katane? Heck, even the band's name is an homage to singer Dave Coverdale's um, White Snake. That sexual innuendo extended to the band's album covers as well. Check out the artwork on White Snake's 1981 album, Come and Get It. You can clearly see an apple and a serpent, a reference to the story of Adam and Eve and the tale of Forbidden Fruit. Now, take a close look at the serpent's tongue. Some some say that closely resembles a female body part, and I'm sure that is no coincidence. Here's a fun one, the 1974 album from Harry Nilsson called Pussycats, which was produced by John Lennon. Look under the table, you see the letter D, and then a rug, R-U-G, then the letter S. Together that forms the word drugs, D-R-U-G-S. The cover of Warren's debut album features this character named Fugazi. He's also known as Cashley Guido Buxley in the Big Talk music video. He's an overpaid, amoral business psychopath who, as the album's title suggests, is dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking rich. There is also more going on here than initially meets the eye. When you flip the cover upside down, you can see a woman in Cashley Guido's ear. Her head is by the earring. She's wearing a skirt and has long flowing hair. There's also a bird next to Cashley's eye. In fact, the bird looks like he's just about to eat out that eye. I'm also kind of suspicious of this bit over here. I have some ideas about what it's supposed to be, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. A lot of people miss this one. That is the hidden images in the clouds on Black Sabbath's 1978 album, Never Say Die. Take a close look. You can see faint ghostly images on both the front and back of the album jacket. Interestingly, these images vary from country to country. For example, the back of the Canadian version seems to show soldiers while the back of the UK version depicts hidden military pilots. The faint images also vary on the front covers. 
For example, this image, which may be a satellite dish or a UFO, is missing from other pressings. On the front of my Canadian copy, I can make out a faint image of what appears to be a man right there, and I can't quite make out what this one is. The cover of Def Leppard's 1993 retroactive album is one of those images within an image pieces of art. At face value, it shows a lady sitting at a dressing table looking in a mirror. But if you look at it a different way, the image takes the form of a skull with a woman's head forming one eye socket and her reflected head in the mirror forming the other eye socket. Variations on this theme appear on other album covers as well, including Aerosmith's Devil got a new disguise and shares heart of stone the share one is pretty cool at face value it's an image of her scrunched up beside a heart of stone but from a different perspective it's the side view of a skull here is one that has fooled many people over the decades. Lots of folks assume that the person wearing tight red leather pants on the cover of Loverboy's 1981 album Get Lucky was singer Mike Reno or maybe guitarist Paul Dean, but that assumption would be incorrect. The model was actually a 13-year-old girl, the daughter of the photographer who shot the cover. Obviously, it's not her arm, though. That belonged to an Argentinian male model hired apparently because of his big hands. It's not exactly a hidden image, but there is definitely more to this album cover than meets the eye. If you dug this episode, you should check out my other videos exploring classic album covers. I'll leave a link to that playlist on the screen right here and in the video description. I'll see you there in a couple of minutes. Until then, dear 33ers, keep on spinning.